is actually acai bowl number two. So I just did not feel like filming yesterday when I made the other one. Considering we are in a pandemic, I might make some Jammu today. You might have heard about Jammu on my Instagram already. If you don't follow me, go do that. Or you just might know about it in general, but it's basically a drink. It's like this Indonesian, this Indonesian health drink type thing. It's really good for inflammation. It's good for like general health and your respiratory system, which is helpful when there's coronavirus going around. <laughs> also just good for colds and flus and that kind of stuff. It's pretty simple to make. I'm using my friend Aaron's recipe, which you may have also seen on my Instagram. Pretty simple. It's like a handful of ginger, a handful of turmeric, a bit of raw honey. A friend of mine's house make, makes his own honey. Has like beehives and stuff. So we've got some of that. Bit of a lemon or lime, I think. I put a bit of apple cider vinegar in right at the end, but I don't think that's in the actual recipe. Bone apple tea. This is fucking good. So it's another beautiful day to be stuck indoors, except I might, dare I say it, leave the house. I've been waiting for this to happen, but they just closed a few beaches along the Gold Coast last night. But the rest of them are still open to locals, I think, which luckily I count as now. They're wanting you to like stay within your postcode and obviously still practice social distancing, only go out for exercise, which is fine because the beach is like a five minute walk away. I also have this fin cut on my leg because someone decided to just surf on top of me. Holy shit, that scared the fuck out of me. And it hurts to lay on it on the board, so I'm not sure if I really want to go out today, but I might. Because honestly, it's just such a beautiful day. While we're allowed out to exercise, I kind of want to. Better to stay indoors as much as possible, but for my sanity, I'm gonna go out probably. I think I've made up my mind, I'm going. so much seawater. Did she catch some waves? Yeah, she did, but did she get absolutely rolled in the process? Yeah, fully. That was a little bit close for comfort, mate. So my online shopping habits have been a little bit interesting. <laughs> yeah, so these lockdowns have nurtured and fostered quite an unsustainable online shopping habit. Yeah, I did make like a full TikTok about that as well. Honestly, it's not as bad and needless as it used to be at all. A lot of it is just boring shit like work related stuff. I just like getting things in the mail, like seeing another human face for a change. The experience of the postie coming up to my door, chucking something at the door and then pretty much running away down the driveway is the only surge in dopamine. It's the only thrill I can really get at the moment. I even make sure I've got pants on so I can run around to the door and say hello. <laughs> oh, it's embarrassing when you say it out loud, hey? <laughs> Point being, super glad freight is an essential service. Truly don't know what I would be doing otherwise it's just unnecessary my street must have a sign on it saying please rev your engine and be super loud when you're driving through here thanks admin uh, with all of that being said a lot of you have been asking if rift is still able to ship things out during the lockdowns and the answer is yes the warehouse is still able to run they've had to split like shifts up and make sure there's only a certain amount of people in the warehouse at one given time so everything's still being shipped out it's all good to go some of you might have recognized this shirt if you've got it the back is significantly cooler than the front you guys always flock to these t-shirts but we've just had a big restock so if you're looking for one you can go grab it now along with our quality tees they've also been restocked you can buy all of these on afterpay and pay for it over time instead of having to pay for it up front. So if that's up your alley, all of that will be linked below. Also, I have been stirring some shit on Instagram. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I have been gently nudging the Animal Crossing community because I made the mistake of asking what Animal Crossing is on Instagram and I got a barrage of angry messages. Truly so many messages. <laughs> so due to who I am as a person, I decided to just stir the pot a little bit and told people to stop dicking around on Animal Crossing, which made them even angrier. <laughs> it's not much, but it's honest work. So that's what I've been doing in quarantine. What about you? So if you want to come witness or join in with me just stirring shit on the internet, feel free to follow me on Instagram. <laughs> no way. What's going on over there? Oh, this girl is shook. What is happening? Can you hear this? Does it sound like I'm just talking to myself? Well, I am, so. It's Corona time. Hey, it's Corona time right now. 
<laughs> all right, that's enough. Whoa. So all the beaches are pretty much like closed to outsiders at the moment. We're at the lookout looking over Cooley the other day and I have literally never seen it dead empty before. It's really pretty when it's not like littered with people. It's quite nice to be honest. Oh, I'm having kombucha out of my coffee mug and you can you can taste the coffee. Oh, oh that's a, mm, interesting. I'm just chilling at home today to be honest. I made some sick new designs for Rift. I've sent those off to manufacturers. Editing a few videos, making some TikToks because that's on my schedule now. I started watching Netflix again. I watched Tiger King and holy... God damn shit god damn man. How do you get that many chaotic lawless people to be just affiliated in the one circle? You bring them together with tigers apparently. I don't I also started watching Too Hot to Handle last night and that is I don't know if I'm like embarrassed for society. I'm hoping most of it's scripted. They usually are, but some of it Again, where are they finding these people? On the note of Netflix though, obviously a lot of you would be watching Netflix or just streaming services in general at the moment. Which brings me to my favorite sponsor of quite a lot of videos, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN. If you don't know what a VPN is, it basically encrypts your online connection. Basically gives you like a private access and allows you to browse the internet safely. It keeps your sensitive data private and keeps your location private. Like right now, I think I'm browsing from Germany technically. But going back to Netflix, one of my favorite features of Surfshark at the moment is the fact that you can unlock the browsing library libraries of streaming services from other countries. So instead of just having the Australian Netflix library, I can also access the American one, which just has a lot more stuff on it, honestly. And it looks like we're gonna be spending a lot of time indoors, so we'll probably need it. As usual, my mates over at Surfshark can give you a massive discount if you use the code Brienne Pass. You also get a whole month for free when you sign up. Scratch that, Surfshark have actually hooked us up with something even better. If you use the code Brienne Pass, you'll be upgraded to an 85% discount and three additional months for free, which is insane. So make sure you jump on that now. I would recommend Australia kind of gets ripped off when it comes to streaming libraries. It's also the closest we're gonna get to being in other countries for quite some time. Speaking of, when I was talking about like the state of the world and the economy in my last quarantine vlog, a few of you correctly brought up the fact that you can't just like pull money out of thin air all of the time, otherwise you have economic collapse. And that is correct, but I do wanna reiterate the fact that I was just saying that governments are happy all of the time, more or less, to consistently like pull money out of thin air, which we're just gonna call printing money for the sake of simplicity. Cause that's what traditionally would have happened before like the internet. It's the exact same equivalent though. Governments are happy to print money all of the time and hand it out to billionaires and massive corporations and make the working class and middle class pay for it, specifically the middle class mostly. But the point I was making is that governments are happy to print that same money and just hand it out to billionaires and big conglomerates, but they make it seem impossible to do the same for the working class or the middle class. Who are the ones creating the goods and services that create that money anyway? Just for the record, I don't think you can or should print money to the extent that we have been in this pandemic on a regular basis. That just wouldn't work. We don't have the the goods and services to back that up. And that's not the point I was making in that last video. I wasn't just saying let's print money for shits and giggles and give it to poor people because I'm fucking Robin Hood now. And there was also like 20 minutes of that last chat that I just didn't put in because it would make the video way too long. The same is probably gonna happen in this chat too. But in those 20 minutes, I did go into like hyperinflation and the consequences of that. I fully understand that. I think these hundreds of billions of dollars that the government is printing at the moment are necessary to an extent, maybe a little bit generous, but to keep everyone afloat and keep money circulating, I think it's a good idea. The tripod decided to stop tripoding, but right now we've literally pulled like hundreds of billions of dollars literally out of nowhere. The Federal Reserve has just said, yep, this exists now and so it does. So we can all agree that this figure exists and now it's being allocated to certain things, but there's nothing tangible to back it up. Just say we give everyone in the country $10,000 each. There'll be a lot more money floating around, but there'll still be the exact same amount of goods and services. And obviously because everyone has this money to buy shit, the demand for products outstrips the supply of the products. People lose confidence in the value of their currency. And because it's a faith-based system, shit hits the fan and you've got hyperinflation. If you give everyone 10 grand and everyone goes to buy a MacBook, but there's only the same amount of Mac books that exist. Everyone in the country has 10 grand. That's 24 million people that can buy a MacBook now. But let's just say only 100,000 MacBooks exist in the country. There's certainly not 24 million is the point. Then the only thing that can happen to make demand balance with supply because we can't pull 24 million MacBooks out of thin air is the price of the MacBook has to go up. So apply that same principle to grocery stores. You might walk into Coles and see a $20 carrot because there's an oversupply of money, but there's only a certain amount of carrots that can be grown. So the price of the carrot has to go up. That leads to hyperinflation and everything being more expensive and your current 
currency being worthless more or less, which is not good and why printing money is not like a blanket solution for anything. Money is basically just like an IOU that we pass around that's subject to change that you can eventually use to trade for something that is tangible. Like it doesn't actually hold any worth. Like it doesn't have any intrinsic value because it's not an asset. You're never really gonna catch a wealthy person hoarding money, but you will catch them hoarding assets. A good example of hyperinflation and printing money sort of getting out of control is Zimbabwe. They had a $100 trillion banknote because their currency was functionally worthless. You could take a wheelbarrow full of cash down to the bakery and only buy one loaf of bread. That's how bad it got. So that's a pretty good example of what happens when you just throw money at a problem that is a lot more complex than that. It happened in Germany. It happened in Venezuela. It happened in America during the Civil War. It's happened a lot of times before and we should probably know better, but we're doing it anyway. In saying that, I don't think our stimulus packages are bad by any means. I think they're supporting people that need support. I think the JobKeeper package in particular is good because it's keeping like people technically employed so that when this does eventually resolve, you've still got that connection between employer and employee. But I don't think you can just throw money at a problem and expect it to go away. It's gonna be like a huge fiscal balancing act for probably the next decade or more. But we're definitely just dipping our toes into like economic crisis at the moment. We're certainly not through the worst of it yet, but anyway. That's enough of that. <laughs> well, I guess I'll go eat a whole thing of olive dip again for what I'm guessing is maybe the 15th time this month. I'm keeping the olive industry alive single-handedly. Morning. Today is a very exciting day because I'm waiting for something in the mail again, which is not shocking. It's a little film camera. It's called the Olympus Meiju 2, I think it's pronounced. I do have another film camera. It's the Pentax K1000, which in my opinion takes better quality photos, but it's not really like a point and shoot. You really have to like get the lighting right and set everything properly. And my light meter in it is broken. So I have to get the light meter app out on my phone and like set everything and then take the photo. It's good for like planned shots, I feel. But I want something that I can just sort of whip out whenever and take like a pretty decent film photo. So I'm waiting for that to show up today. It's pretty much it. <laughs> All right, so she's here. We've got quite a bit of bubble wrap. Oh my God, is this an unboxing video? What? Well, it's going terribly. Let's just... Hey, there she is. All right, so here's this bad boy. I'm also realizing it probably doesn't have batteries and it doesn't have batteries, but what does it take? Look, I don't know, we'll find batteries somewhere, but I did buy film. All right, I'm gonna go take this for a test run maybe tomorrow, hopefully, and Tell you how that goes in the next vlog. I think that's about it, hey. If you're new here, I give shout outs at the end of every video to people who subscribe and put the bell on. So the YouTube shout out goes to Amber Bailey and I also give shout outs to people on Instagram and TikTok. Insta shout out goes to Shawnee Toza and TikTok shout out goes to Chloe Thomas. Uh, so thank you guys for commenting, subscribing, existing and or being bored in isolation and watching my videos. Officeworks has batteries, of course they do. Uh, where the fuck is Officeworks? Works?